QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Rental Income Setup Items. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area. Noting in the view drop down, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial, the PL, the profit and loss, the income statement, range and changing, 010123 to 123123. Let's customize it. Fonts and numbers, changing it up to 14. Okay, yes, okay. Let's open up the other big report. Reports, company and financial, that being the balance sheet. The balance sheet. Change in the range 010123 to 123. Let's fonts and number it and bring it up to 14. Okay. And yes and okay. That's the setup process that we do every time. We're going to go back to the home page here. Thus far, our primary source of revenue has been the sale of inventory, in our case, guitars. We focused on inventory because you have that added complexity of tracking the inventory in a perpetual system. However, we want to look at some other items of sales as well. We have looked at some service items and created sales receipts and invoices for them. In a prior presentation, we focused in on a job cost system where we might, for example, have partnerships and then have a staff similar to a bookkeeping company or CPA firm or a law firm that would then have to enter their time into the system. And then the partners, for example, billing out that time. In our case, we imagined we had guitar instructors entering their time that we would bill out the time. Now we want to think about a rental kind of setup that you might have, and it might look something like this. We've got things that we're going to rent. In our case, we've got music equipment. We've got the guitars. We've got the drums and so on, amplifiers and whatnot that we might be able to rent out. The process might look something like someone calls in asking for us to hold on to equipment to rent it out to them. As they do, we might enter an estimate into the system to see what it is we need to hold on to and make sure that we have on hand so that we can then rent it out to them. We might use that estimate to then collect a down payment, meaning we get paid before we do the rental to kind of lock them into renting it out. Otherwise, we wanna make sure that we have the equipment to rent it to someone else. We want them to lock in the rental and then when we actually rent it out to them, we might then create an invoice which would then facilitate uh, the sale. So that's going to be the general uh, thought process that we'll go through with this kind of revenue stream, this revenue process. Now, what, we would, what would we need to do in order to set this up? We would need to say, well, what kind of items are we going to be renting? If I'm going to create an estimate uh, and an invoice, what am I going to be charging? I'm going to have to set up rental items to charge for. So I'm going to say, all right, let's go to the lists drop down. Let's go to the items. Now, what kind of things might we rent? We might rent each piece of equipment separately. I might say each guitar has cost this much. I might say each amp costs this much. Each drum set costs this much. And that's one way that you can set it up. And I could like set up each of those individual items and possibly take those individual items and then make a group out of them. In other words, just realize that you could set up multiple different items and then go to your items drop down and new items. And you could try setting up like a group of items here. And within the group, you can pull in, you know, multiple items and you might pull in like two guitars and an amplifier and whatnot. And then you'll build them out as like one kind of group amount. So just note that you have that option. 
but I'm not going to do it that way here. What I'm going to do instead is say that I'm going to close this out, that we're going to enter one item, which is a standard group price. So we're going to say, yeah, that you can get two standard guitars, a, a drum set, and an amplifier, and some, some microphones or whatever is going to be the standard set. And we'll sell that for one price instead of saying i'm going to sell i'm going to rent out one guitar at a time or anything like that we're going to say hey this is the standard set if you don't need all that stuff it's still the same price and if you need if you need more than that maybe you can add on we'll have some add on items so that's going to be our thought process here so i'm going to set up an item for like a set that they might need for you know a weekend so we're going to say add a new item and so i'm just going to say it's a service item and I'm gonna call it band, let's call it band set number one. And so I'm gonna just say, this is the standard band set for number one. You've got a pick maybe of some standard guitars. And if you wanna up up the level, level up the guitars, then it would be an add-on. You got a, a standard amp, you got a standard drum set and so on. I'm gonna say it's 2000. I have no idea what the price would be for something like this. I'm gonna say 2000 and I'm gonna say it's non-taxable because it's not an inventory item. And I could put it into service item again, and that might be appropriate because remember, every time we set up these items on the income statement, we wanna think, should I just put it into service items and then uh, break out the, the detail in the sub ledgers or the sub reports, which can break out by what we actually sold. I could do that, which would break it out by this item here. Or maybe I'm saying, well, the, I think this is significant enough to have another line item for the things that we rent on the actual income statement. That's what we'll do here. Let's do that here. I'm going to say new item. And I'm going to say this is going to be, let's say it's equipment rental income. Hopefully I spelled that right. I'm not sure. I'm not even going to check it. I'm going to say that's good. And it's an income item. So I wanted an income. So I'm going to say save it and close it. Save it and close it. And that looks good. Okay. So now we can, we can set up our equipment. Now let's say they want to level up. Let's say we have... We have some people that might say, hey, I want a, I want a better guitar or I want another guitar or let's say we have some standard like upgrades. So that we're going to say that's going to cost an add on of another uh, $50, we'll say. So I'm going to say another item new. I'm going to call it a service item. It's going to be rental add on, you know, guitar or whatever. So if you want a more advanced guitar, expensive guitar, maybe we, we have that as the add on, or if you want another, you know, you know, same level guitar, maybe that's the add on. We're just kind of making this up, but that's the idea. So it's going to be non taxable. It's going to once again, go to equipment rental. So there we have it. So that looks good. So we'll save it and close it. So now we've got our items set up so that when we when we set the estimate and when we enter the invoice it should be as easy as possible let's say there's another amp too let's say there's an add-on amp i'm going to say item new and let's say they want two amps sometimes they want to be really loud they want to piss off the neighbors so let's say we have this is a we give them one amp but it's not that loud they want to level up the amp you got to pay more if you really want to piss people off rental add on amp we'll say and so we'll level up that. And so then this will be $40 non-taxable. And we'll put this into equipment rental as well. So now we've got the standard set. You can add another amp to it. You can upgrade the guitars if you want. Let's say, okay. So now we're set up. So if I go back to the homepage, again, the process would be if someone calls up and requests that we hold on to a set of stuff, we can go in here in the estimate and we can add those, you know, the band set in here and so on. We could set up the estimate. We can use that estimate to say, hey, look, I want 10% of the estimate or something possibly as a down payment, which will then say, I'm going to say, no, remember the estimate, as we'll see, will not have any impact on the financial statement, but then can be used to create the invoice and can be used to track in the customer center. And then we'll enter a receive payment before we invoice because we want them to give us a down payment to lock down the fact if I'm going to hold on to these amplifiers and these guitars and not sell or rent them to anyone else, I want to make sure that you're committed. That's what the down payment is for. And then I uh, will create an invoice and apply the, uh, make the invoice from the estimate most likely, and then apply the credit to it when we rent out the equipment or possibly when we get it back or something like that. That's going to be the general idea. And obviously 
then the income statement will be impacted here. And notice we created another sales line as opposed to just service items. We'll have another sales line because that was what we set up with the items of equipment rental will be the general idea. No change thus far to the income statement or balance sheet yet. We just set up the items so that we can do this process going forward.